guys, that's your Connect Today, Rich Out of Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Glad to have you here. Today, we're talking about Frenzy the Cackler. Frenzy the Cackler is a brand new Void Champion at the time of this recording and a pretty unique kit when it comes to Void Champions out there. So let's go ahead and, and jump right into it. So Frenzy looks like one of those hyenas from The Lion King a little bit, right? Uh, one of uh, Scar, what is Scar's minions? Uh, it's a Void Affinity. She's a Void Affinity Skinwalker Champion, Epic Defense Base Champion. Uh, the reviews so far are really good on her. She's a very, again, unique for an Epic Champion. But look at her base stats, 16, 6 uh, on the HP. Uh, attack is irrelevant. doesn't matter from a defense based champion 1443 a very nice base defense 100 speed uh pretty good there as well honor a1 defense base uh searing hack attacks one enemy 50 percent chance of instantly activating an hp burn on the target on the a2 three turn cooldown three time at random each hit placing an hp burn fills this champion's turn here by 10 percent for each hp burn debuff placed by this skill pretty handy there it's like a little mini 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 because the instant activation is not on the same ability it's on the at uh, a1 rather than the a2 so it's a very miniature version of a chronum or a ninja or something like that right it's not an aoe attack so we're not thinking right out the gate a spider burner necessarily on the a3 attacks all enemies on a four turn cooldown 100 of placing a provoke and then an increased defense on this champion for two turns she actually places that increased defense before she attacks it's not uh, apparent from reading the text here so it's really nice she is self buffing to get maximum damage out of this aoe attack when we look at the multipliers here on that uh, they give her by the way a three overall grading on hellhades.com ice golem ice golem dragon hydra uh i will say where is sand devil Sand Devil 2.5, I disagree with that ranking. She can definitely duo Sand Devil. Uh, anyway, a little more on that in a moment. Uh, so a 1.8 defensive multiplier, but it is a three-time hitter, so not bad. A 3.4 uh, damage multiplier on the A1, which is a godlike damage rating. And then we have a 3.8 defensive multiplier on that AoE, which again is not bad at all. Uh, I want to say that's probably the third or so hardest hitting defensive based AoE nuke out of all the, uh, the, the epics in the game. Uh, plus, you factor in her scalability on that is not bad. You know, you could use her definitely as an arena uh, nuker. We're going to run that in the end of today's video, kind of an arena nuke build for this champion. Uh, not going to be an end game. We'll talk more about that as well in terms of arena. But it's a nice hybrid between damage, survivability, and control all in one ability on the A3. Broiling Bulwark increases champion's defense by 2% each time an HP burn debuff is activated on enemies. Stacks up to 20%. So it's a 20% a, uh, a bonus of defense, excuse me, for every HP burn that's activated on enemies. So really tanky when you factor in this. It does reset each round. So it's best in areas like Clan Boss uh, where there only is one round. Areas like, you know, Arena, if you wanted to. Again, we'll talk more about that as well. Uh, Hydra, Sand Devil stuff like that right uh, we also have defense and dungeons by 30 percent. that's an incredible defensive aura here that really just complements the rest of the kit beautifully right uh aesthetically like i said she looks like the uh the hyenas and lion king a little bit what do you what do you think guys a little bit a little bit uh pretty cool pretty cool aesthetics on this champion i like him i like him let's go ahead and give her a run first i want to talk about sand devil now this is not a champion that's going to be able to uh duo sand devil 25 unfortunately right i tried i tried putting her with godseeker and eerie and i tried putting her in insane gear i actually tried for about an hour and a half <laughs> that's what i was doing before this video because originally i was going to create a video uh, uh like a really in-depth spotlight on her on my main channel uh but unfortunately she just wasn't able to get the job done it really all comes down to the instant activation a 50 percent instant activation is not bad at all but in order to kill the sand devil at the high high stages before the sand devil kills us or totally minimizes our max hp and then can one shot us on not the sleep ability uh it's just not going to be fast enough the run is not going to be fast enough to keep the team to keep the duo i should say alive so it's unfortunate now i put her in god tier gear like fully ascended just some of the best gear i had in my account and i won one battle out of like four or five now i could have done the dirtiest thing ever and upload that video to my main channel and been like there you go only showing the win right but i wouldn't do that to you guys i would not rely on her on high stages however 
you can run her on other stages, right? Maybe you are you can get to stage, you know, somewhere around 11, 12, 13, and you have Godseeker and Eerie and Sand Devil. You can put her in regen in Immortal, and you can tackle stage 17, 18, 19, 20, and make some progression. More importantly, you can get your hands on the superior oils, which you're going to need to fully ascend your artifacts, right? So let's go ahead and try in stage 17. First, I'll show you the build really quickly that we're using on her. I replaced all the god tier gear and I put reasonable gear on her. So we have a regen and a mortal. Uh, at 183, I'm not sure if that's going to be fast enough, honestly. Uh, let me show you what I have on her. HP percentage on the, uh, the gauntlets. I have HP percentage on the chest. And then I have HP percentage on the boots as well. So HP percentage everywhere on this champion to try to keep her alive. Now, I think I could probably get away with speed on the boots. Let's give it a shot. If I have any available. If, if you're anything like me, guys, man, finding, eh, that's defense, defense. It's speed, speed. Eh, I'd rather not use a fully ascended uh, piece. Let's just go, but I do need a little bit of accuracy as well. Let's go with, uh, sorry, guys, sorry, sorry. Had I should have had this ready to go. Uh, you know what? Let's just put on a crap, not crappy, but a five-star speed boots with a triple resistance roll on it, you know? So like uh, making things a little bit more reasonable in terms of stats here. So again, uh, just a lot of survivability. HP percentage, HP percentage, and now we have speed on the boots. Total stats, 69, 34, uh, and then 417 on the accuracy, 207 on the speed. Uh, for masteries, I'm going to switch up the build to a more all-around build right after this one, guys. But we went down with uh, Eagle Eye. Again, this is a solo build or a survivability build, right? So the areas I would use this are Sand Devil uh, or maybe like an Ice Golem, hard. Ice Golem, a regular, I think, right? Where you're just relying on the burn to be the major damage dealer, not necessarily in the provoke for control. So you could use this build in Doom Tower Waves and Faction Wars, stuff like that, right? It's actually not bad for an all-around build. You're just going to be leaving a lot of damage on the table. If you want to mess around, get more damage from this champion or use her even in the arena, stay tuned for the next build for that, okay? Uh, but this is pretty all-around. I have accuracy on the uh, banner. I have defense on the amulet. And I have HP on the ring here. Uh, so let's go ahead and and, and uh, I don't have any awakening on this champion, unfortunately. If I did, I would probably go with uh, Cruelty, decrease target's defense per hit. Uh, she has that triple hitter, which is nice against bosses. Get that defense down pretty early. So I would probably go Cruelty. Of course, you could always consider Commanding Presence as well. Or you could consider Phantom Touch if you want a little bit more damage or an extra hit for Fire Knight out of that A1 ability. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into battle here. So Godseeker and Eerie, I will point out to you guys, team setup for these two. Godseeker is going to run as is. Frenzy, though, I'm prioritizing Jaws of Flame, but I am not shutting off the A3 because I want the increased defense on her to keep her alive, right? So as long as we're prioritizing the A2 Jaws of Flame, uh, that's going to make sure that every time she's revived, she's going to go in with that ability to land that HP burn against the Sand Devil. So here's the run. We get wiped out. Godseeker revives herself with her passive and then Frenzy. And then we go in there, we land the HP burn. Hopefully we instantly activate it right afterwards. Uh, but again, it's a 50-50 there. So sometimes it's going to work out. Sometimes it's not going to work out. So what I'm going to do, guys, is, you know, I'll let it run for like, you know, a few seconds here. Uh, but I'm going to cut to the end because it's probably going to be around a five minute run or so. Uh, but again, it's going to be rinse and repeat. She applies it. She comes in. She instantly activates it. I'm not even sure if she got it there. I think she did. Uh, so... That's it. It's kind of like a mini walking tomb drang type strategy. It's a uh, ninja type strategy. It's a chronom type strategy, okay? But it gives people an option who might not have those champions at pulling off a duo as long as you have Godseeker and Neri. Unfortunately, I'll answer the question before some of you ask it in the comments. There is no substitution for Godseeker and Neri using a strategy like this. The reason you can put it pull it off with Godseeker, and she's in regen and immortal as well, uh, is because she has the revive on her passive and the revive with the cooldown reset on her A3. 
okay? So it's a very unique skill set for a team like this. But I wanted to show you guys because I am getting asked quite often, what if I don't have one of those other aforementioned champions? How can I pull off a strategy with Godseeker on Sand Devil? So I will be right back when this run is over or towards the end. Uh, stay tuned. All right, guys, we're getting close to the end here. And you can see it's over six minutes on the run, but it is, is successful. It's going to be successful here. We land that burn. We didn't get that last instant activation, but one more cycle through and we'll be good to go. The reason it's taking so long is, again, because of the RNG on that A1. Sometimes we're getting the activation. Other times we're not. So if that was a little bit higher, like a 60 or 75% chance on that A1, it would make a big, big difference. It's kind of too bad in a way because it's so close to having a viable stage 24 25 sand devil camp uh farmer excuse me uh but just kind of shy of it so anyway guys let's go ahead and change the build away from kind of a region immortal like super sustainability and into a more i guess traditional kind of nuker build where you can use in some of the same areas all right guys the rebuild for a more general purpose outside of kind of soloing or do duo duoing dungeons uh i would say though you can run her in that region immortal set for areas like Ice Golem where she's going to be taking heavy damage, as long as you build her with accuracy, she's still going to get the job done. So I would be tempted to run her, to try to run her first, just as a regen immortal type champion with high accuracy and as high speed as you can muster and see if that services all the utility that you need her for. However, I do want to do a little bit of a damage check. I didn't run her in Savage and Lethal because you know, let's face it, she's not an all-out, you know, traditional nuker. She's more of a control slash nuker type champion who can deal some pretty nice damage as a tanky defensive champion who brings her own increased defense, and it does look like she's placing this increased defense before she goes in with a nuke on the A3. You guys can go ahead and take a look in just a moment in the uh, arena. Uh, so we don't have to set her up with a Mithrala or a Sifi or a Mausoleum Mage or whoever you're running as an increased defense champion. Uh, so let's go ahead and get a shot here guys i have two perception and one crit damage set on her i have 100 and 222 on the crit rate crit damage 222 on the speed as well man there's a lot of twos going around here Maybe I, uh, is it such like a gramp up thing to say? Be like, maybe I should play the lottery. Uh, either way, we have a decent amount of defense. We did choose to still hold on to a lot of accuracy. We could min max the damage further by putting a lethal savage set on her, as well as defense on the banner. But I chose to keep the accuracy. Moreover, that 20 speed that we're getting from the substats will come in handy as well. We have crit damage still on the amulet. We still have defense on the ring. We have speed on the boots on a crit damage set. We have defense percentage on a crit damage set on the chest, and we have crit damage on a perception set on the gauntlets. Uh, for masteries on this build, you can see we went with like the arena nuker masteries. We went support uh, tree, we came down, picked up the accuracy, we have ruthless ambush, we have opportunist, we have bring it down. We have Helm Smasher. Those are the four most important masteries, in my opinion, for an arena nuker. Uh, in the way that we're going to be utilizing her in the arena in just a moment, we have Ruthless Ambush for 8% extra damage on the first hit and 12% extra damage with a, uh, a sleep. And we're going to set her up with a Kaimar. So we'll get 20% extra damage uh, plus... Bring it down. Increases damage inflicted by 6%, attacking uh, targets with higher max HP. That's not always going to be the case. Her HP isn't super low, but it's also really not high. So only really the nukers may have less uh, HP than this on the opposing team. So let's go ahead and give her a shot and just see what she can do. So is Frenzy going to be a top, you know, 200 end of the week arena champion? Is she going to be top 100 in live arena? Certainly not. I don't want to give you guys that impression. Uh, not She's not that good. But... You know, for a champion who's defensive base that can go on a go first team that doesn't need an increased defense setup, who has really good control, 100% uh, provoke on a uh, on a void champion, not to worry about affinity matchups. Uh, you could do a lot worse for just arena farming with a champion like this, right? Especially if you're going to build her anyway. So let's see what she what she can do for damage. I'm not sure who's going to win this speed race. Let's go ahead and uh, and find out here. I do. Good, 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 good. All right, my arbor is not that fast compared to most because my best speed gear is all on Yameko on my account. Uh, so I'm not sure what her speed is, but it's not crazy, crazy. All right, let's go in with the A3 and just do a damage check. Uh, and I want you to watch. I'm going to slow it down. 
I want you to watch that increased defense land on her. Boom. And then the nuke comes down. What, around 40k damage or so? But I guess just as importantly, if not more importantly, their reviver is provoked. Their nuker is provoked. So it's pretty much game over here, right? I'm going to go ahead and put it on auto. Uh, but that's the beautiful thing. If you don't kill everybody... You're just going to provoke everybody. She's going to have that increased defense. She's going to be able to stay alive, and we can just move from there. Another way that you could build her is in stone skin if you wanted to, you know? That way you're landing that provoke, and you're guaranteeing that she's going to stay alive for the most part, right? Uh, let's go against this squad here as well. Do one more damage check. Hopefully we go first again. The thing is, she doesn't uh, nuke hard enough to act as a standalone nuker in the fashion that we're using her right now. Uh She's re you'd really probably have to remove a Kaimar or a Madame Ceres from this team and put in another nuker to be more consistent, is my gut. See, she's not really killing anybody. And then we have a Mithrala on the team, so she's going to come in there and she's going to cleanse everybody, and now we're in a world of hurt. Uh, but they only have Battle Kazar, so maybe we could still win. I say only Battle Kazar no, with no disrespect to Battle Kazar, but he's not really an arena champion. Uh, but hey, who knows? They still might be able to toast me here. Boom. So now Bad L and their well, two, one of their two revivers is dead, but we've run out of good nukes. And this is what I was kind of alluding to earlier, uh, that you need a little bit more damage on a go first team. So if I had her maybe a little bit faster and I used, that was her A2. We killed Bad L again. Uh, if I had her a little bit faster or a lot of bit faster, right? And we used her almost in a similar way to where we're using, how we're using Kaimar on this team, right? He's coming in early, basically cutting in line after Arbiter speed boosts him and CCing the enemy team. If we did that with Frenzy, I think that would be a little bit more, you know, playing to her skill set. I'm not, I'm seeing nice damage, but I'm not seeing the damage that I want out of a champion that I'm expecting to be, you know, carrying the heavy load, so to speak, of damage on my squad. So let's just keep going here. I think we're probably gonna gonna win this because, you know, if they had a good nuker on their team, we definitely wouldn't win this. But her A1 does hit hard, notably. So let's see what we can do. Remove these buffs. Of course, Mithrala is uh, resisting everything, but who knows? Maybe we can come in with the A1 and and uh, finish off a Duchess. I have no idea. Oh, we have the A3. Let's try to land. Let's try to land the provo- nah, I think I want to save this ability. Let's try with this A1. Boom. We don't have the increase- Ooh! That wasn't bad damage considering we didn't have the increased defense. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have chanced it. Maybe I should have just went right with the A3. But I, what I was trying to do there is keep her ready to go for after the revival comes up, had it came up, which is not going to. And then we would have came in with the A3 and provoked and nuked and killed everybody, right? Uh- where it is right now is we would have been able to reset with Kaimar anyway, so it's all moot. All right, let's keep everybody alive here. Nice heal comes down. And finally do something to Mithrala with the incredibly high accuracy as she is known for. Come in. Eventually we'll be able to pop her off here. Let's just go with the A2. Not bad. I mean, we're looking at like three hitter over 20, so a 60k damage. Again, not amazing, but not too bad. Uh, let's just try one more squad here. Yeah, I don't know. This is a weird Warlord team. Warlord in the lead with the Resistance Aura. You usually see him with speed for sure. Let's just see what we can do here. We got two Stone Skins, Elva and, and uh, Helicath. And we removed only one of them. Unfortunately, not on the Reviver. Eh, let's come in with a Provoke. Provoke only landed on Warlord there. Uh, well, their Cleanser is going to go pretty soon. That's going to stink. Let's just go with the A2. Not bad. Let's reset cooldowns. Let's try to remove that. We did remove it this time. Let's speed boost and cut in line again. And try to land that Provoke on Elva. We don't, but things are looking really good here. And again, this is the type of, uh, you know, strategy that you can employ with a champion like this. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not bad in the damage. Here's the A2 again. Eh. Not crazy in the damage, but cool in the control. Uh, definitely, I would put her like maybe 
maybe three or four in terms of defenses based damage dealers in the game for epic champions uh behind like a husk rule and a grush the mangler and i think i'm forgetting somebody else as well guys there you have it pretty dang cool champion if only servicing your needs that we talked about in the first half of the video where she can solo content like sand devil if you don't have a walking tomb drang or a ninja depending on the level that you're focusing on guys thank you so much for watching and as always take care guys